Peace, peace, peace is Free Soul. Here to give you all this live and studio version of my new single, Anku Jasana, featuring Lava. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah.
Ashi, Ashi, Ashi. I'm in Rahatap, Jose. Akuja, Sinev, sister. I'm not sure what might have happened because my system kicked me off twice during the song. So I just blinked back in. So hopefully I'm in the right place at the right time. <laughs> uh, hello, and uh, I am going to start out by saying welcome to Rosé. Welcome everyone to today's community celebration. And I just want to first of all say that we are glad that you are here. We know that you had options of where you would be today, and we are glad that you chose to spend it with us. Okay, so next up, we're gonna have the affirmation brought by Mama Denisha and Baba Tai. Please come forward. And after that is gonna be Baba Damu. So Baba Damu, you're gonna be next. Baba Tai, Mama Denisha, please come forward. Good, mor good morning, we'll say. A good afternoon to those of you not on the left coast. Um, the will say community affirmation. We will know God's truth to be free and self-determined. Creator, help us remember the humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and to honor the struggles of our elders. Let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let there be peace and harmony among us. Let us be loving, sharing, and creative. Let us work study and listen so we may learn, teach, and cultivate self-reliance. Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect our hearts and our homeland. We will raise our children according to the needs of our nation with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction of our people. We are an African people. We are uh, the children of God. Children of God. I say. I say. Baba Damu, please come forward. Baba. Baba. If Baba Damu is not come here, then if Minister Makalisi is available, we'll just switch them around and have Minister Makalisi go forward. So Baba Damu, last chance. Okay, Minister Makalisi, we know you're the showman. You ready? <laughs> Ashi, I'm in Rahatep, we'll see. Um, Ashi, who Ashi. I just give thanks and praises for life, health, and strength, for the presence of the most high energy essence within my life, in our lives, in our community, in our movement, in our de desire, our determination to share it with our people near and far, far and wide. I want to share this song with you entitled, In Mott, Together We Rise. In Mott, Together We Rise. I was blessed to get this song in August of 2011. I don't think I've ever shared it in the World State community, so here we go. I remember we once lived without the power of self-knowledge under the evil of the hypocrites, their madness divide and conquer. But then one day my broke in from way down in our souls creator and ancestors said rise up and come back home in my heart together we rise in my we rise truth justice and harmony balance right order reciprocity power to live strong and free in my together we rise in my Together we rise in my, we rise. It's the power of creation entrusted to you and me from the heart of our creator for all eternity. Power to set a people free to live eternally. Power to live strong and free in love and unity. In my heart, together we rise in my, 
we rise. Truth, justice, and harmony. Balance, right order, reciprocity. Power to live strong and free. In Mat, together we rise. In Mat, together we rise. In Mat, we rise. Thanks and praises. We no longer live without the power of self-knowledge. From the ashes of that living death, in Mat, together we're rising. Every day, do all you can to strengthen your heart and soul. And by word and deed, teach the children to stay on this road back home. In Mat, together we rise, in Mat. We rise, truth, justice, and harmony, balance, right order, reciprocity, power to live strong and free in love and unity. In my together we rise, in my we rise, in my together we rise, in my we rise, in my. Mark together we rise, in Mark we rise, in Mark we rise, in Mark we rise, rise up. Ashe, Ashe, yes, yes, Ashe. It is just amazing to me how that man could just pull a song out of the sky. And just the, <laughs> the writing ability is just amazing to me. And my, together we rise. It even is appropriate. I, what am I going to do with all this? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm laughing again. I'm smiling again. I'm still pointing at the telephone with my mouse key thing, but that's okay. I'll get past it. Um, next up is going to be our historical tribute with Sugar D. Hey, come forward, Sugar D. I'm ready for this. Sugar D, please come forward. And then next up is going to be Baba Damu after the Okay, I'm coming. Tribute. Give me one second. No, one you're second. You're fine. Baba Damu is going to be coming after the historical tribute is done. So Baba Damu, you want to be on deck. Okay. And I'm on deck. Give me one second, one more second. I'm here. I'm here, you guys. We get, <laughs> get ready to share my screen. Guys, let me tell you something. This was a task. I went down a whole lot of rabbit holes just for the Wose community. So I tell you, this was something. But anyway, to continue, first, I'd like to ask the elders for permission to speak. Come forward, my sister, as the spirit leads you. Come forward. Thank you. Now I'm going to attempt to share this screen. Now I'm going to share this screen, not attempt. We went over this yesterday, and I did it at least three times. So let's see how it's going to work. OK, nobody sees the screen, can they? Let me see. What did I do wrong? Hold on a second. Uh -oh. I'm going to unshare the screen. Give me one more second. Give me one more time. Let me pull up the PowerPoint. That would help, wouldn't it? Oh, got it up now. Okay, let me try it again. Share the screen. Ah. I don't see my PowerPoint. Hmm. There it is. Can y'all see it? Yes. Okay, good. Hold on. Give me one second. I have to make things work here. Hold on a second. Because it's going to be good. I'm telling you it's going to be good, y'all. I did a lot of work. Okay. Can we see it? Just, it's Not all of it. It's Not all of, of it. It's kind of okay. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me try something else. 
I tell you, I can't get it together for nothing, can I? I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Got it. I got it. Can you see it? I can yes. see it. Yes. Okay, good. And I can now see I'm gonna, it. Now I'm going to try this. Can you see the whole thing? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. Good. And I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm going to change it too. So I got to let you guys got to let me know if, it, if I change it, you can see it. Benjamin Banneker. Born 1731 and he died 1806. On November 9th, 1731, Benjamin Banneker was born and was part of a great people, along with this girl who was also born November 9th. Benjamin Banneker was born a free American, African American man in the British colony of Maryland. This area is now called Ellicott City, Maryland near Baltimore. Benjamin's grandmother was Molly Welsh. <clears throat> Walsh, a white indigent servant from England. Now this is a book about her. I couldn't find a real picture of her, but she was accused of stealing milk and was condemned to death, but was instead sent to the British colony in North America America as an endangered servant for seven years. Story has it that Molly actually knocked over a pail of milk. When her servitude ended, Molly purchased a farm and two slaves. She set them both free and married one of them. Molly married a man named, they called him Banneker. Banneker was the son of a Gambian king that was captured during the slave trade in Africa. Now, let me tell you why they got married or how they got married. When they got married, when she bought them, he refused to work for her because he said, and he finally communicated to her that he was the son of a king and that it was improper for him to be a slave. Or he said, and I'm not going to convert to your Christianity either. So Banneka was part of what they called, of a tribe called the Wolof people. Now, a little bit about the Wolof people. I told you I went down a lot of holes. The Wolof people are the West African ethnic group found in Northwestern Senegal, the Gambia, and Southwestern Coastal, I think it's called, I think it's pronounced Maria, Mauritania. In Senegal, the Wolofs are the largest ethnic group, ethnic group while elsewhere, they are a minority. They refer to themselves as Wolof and speak the Wolof language in the West Atlantic branch of the Niger Congo family of languages. I did go to look up what the Wolof language sound like and look like, and that would be something that, that, that was something that was very interesting. So go check it out whenever you get a chance. Molly and, and Banica had several children. One was a daughter named Mary. Now, Mary Banneka grew up and married an African slave named Robert. Now, Robert, he bought his freedom after he, be, after he became a slave, after Mary married him. Robert took on Mary's last name. That's why you see Banneke. Benjamin grew up on his father's farm with, farm with three sisters, Molly, Minta, and Jemima, and self-taught himself. And, and taught himself. He became a farmer. And I wanna go back about what happened to his last name. He practiced reading, his, his grandmother Molly taught him how to read and write. He practiced reading from a large Bible. He went to the Quaker school, which was integrated and the schoolmaster changed his last name from that Banneke to Banneker. That's how the last name got changed. Benjamin grew up on his father's farm, farm, like I say, with three sisters, Molly, Minta, and Jermina, and taught himself and self-taught himself. He became a farmer, a clock maker, a mathematician, a saber astronomer, and we'll talk about that later, astrophysicist, a, astrophysicist, a city planner, author, publisher, and a civil rights activist. 
Can you see that? This looks like you can't see it there. Benjamin, the Bannockers grew corn and tobacco on their farm. Benjamin worked hard on the farm and learned irrigation. He devised an irrigation system of ditches and little dams to control water from the springs, known around as the Banneke Spring on the family farm. Their tobacco farm flourished even in times of drought. Irrigation was developed by the ancient Nubians using a water device called a sakia. Y'all ever heard of that? A sakia is a mechanical water lifting device. In 1751, Banneke borrowed a pocket watch, took it apart, made drawings of each component and reassembled the watch fully functional. From the drawings, he proceeded to carve out wood, out of wood and large replicas of each component, calculating the proper number of teeth for each gear and the necessary relationships between the gear. He completed the construction of the wooden clock in 1753. This is what his clock looked like. For over 50 years, Banneker's clock kept accurate time and struck hours. Neighbors would come to see his clock and go to him for these services. He made the first clock in America. Benjamin took mo spent most of his time farming, studying, I see, farming, studying, reading, and enjoying exchange and exchanging correspondence with other scholars. He enjoyed math, science, and music. He taught himself how to play the violin and the flute. <clears throat> He became very accomplished at both. Benjamin taught himself algebra, geometry, logarithms, trigonometry, and, astron and astronomy. As a mathematician, Banneker would chain, exchange and complete challenging math problems with other math mathematicians via email. Here's an example of one of his uh, math problems, and he will also do a little poetry on it. And things like just 72, I did suppose an answer falls from this arose. I doubled the Psalm of 72, but still I found that that would not do. I mixed the numbers of them both, which show so plain that I'll make oath. 800 leaps the dog did make and 74 the hare to take. Now you go figure that out because I couldn't figure that out. But anyway, that was one of the things that he would do. He was also at age 58, Banneker began, began to study of astronomy and was soon predicting future solar and lunar eclipses and celest celestial events. He was the first person to do these things. He spent a full, full year painstakingly charting the stars and planets each night. He became known as the Sable Astronomer. Now guys, I wanted to know what they meant by Sable because I'm just, I'm just nosy like that. So I looked up the word and Sable is also an animal, but they call that animal that sable because of the color of it. Sable is a color, almost black shade of brown. It's also used in French and English as the term for black, just to let you know. In 1790, Banneker calculated what they call ephemeris. I didn't know what that was either, so I looked that up too. And um, ephemeris is a table and data giving calculated positions of celestial objects at regular intervals throughout a period. In 1792, Banneker published his first almanac. Banneker compiled the emeris or information table for annual almanacs that were published the, for the years 17, 92 through 1797. Benjamin Banneker's Almanac was the name of it and it contained many useful facts and information. Banneker had learned over the years and was a top seller for pencil from Pennsylvania to Virginia and even into Kentucky. It was important because it was one of the first published works and the first almanac or book of science by an African-American author. His almanacs were famed as far away as Europe. He stopped publishing due to the lack of 
themselves. Then he got with the Ellicott. Now everybody, I don't know if anybody I know on the West Coast have ever heard of Ellicott City, but, uh, and they may have, they may not have, but, I, but Ellicott City is in Maryland. And Benjamin became friends with the Ellicott family that moved next door. He became friends with George and Andrew. I couldn't find a picture of, of George, but I found a picture of Andrew. Now, Andrew was a major in the military. Now, George was like uh, Benjamin. He loved mathematics and, um, and books and reading. So George was the one that loaned Benjamin several books and a telescope which Benjamin learned about surveying and being an astronomer. About 1791, Major Andrew Ellicott, who it was George's cousin and not his brother, hired Benjamin to assist in surveying the District of Columbia. Now there were two different stories, guys. Like I said, I went down and went through a whole rabbit hole of things. And one of the stories about him surveying actually said that um, he ended up, it was kind of shaky on, he ended up, it says originally hired by Andrew Ellicott, uh, say Banneker assisted in surveying the federal building. After Ellicott left, Banneker took over, finishing from the memory of the survey plans and incorporating his own skills. Now, the other story was that there was another guy, his name was Pierre. He came through and he was supposed to be the one that was over for surveying things. And he got mad, took all of the plans and left. And Benjamin ended up from memory reconstructing those plans and um, finishing up the project to include some of the streets and things that, uh, that needed to be put in, in the plans. So he was also a city planner. They said he took over the recreation of the plans from memory in two days, incorporating streets, parks, and major buildings. Then he was also, that was part of the city planning that he, he, he uh, actually did. Now, Banneker also wrote Thomas Jefferson an impassioned letter to proclaiming the equal inte intellect of Africans and Europeans, imploring him for the cessation of the practice of slavery. Now, what happened was uh, Thomas Jefferson, supposedly at the time, was the Secretary of State. So Thomas was actually crying and having a fit because they were under the British colony and he was trying to say, let my people go. So Banneriga got a little upset about it and wrote him a letter saying, how dare you say, let your people go when you have us in slavery? And, that, and he answered him back, of course he did, like they always do lie and say he was gonna do something about it and we're gonna see if we can stop it. And he didn't, of course he didn't. But anyway, he, uh, he did write and he did fight for the civil rights, Banneker did. He did a lot of fighting for the civil rights of, of our people. He contributed greatly in the movement for the freeing of the slaves and, and granting equal rights, rights to the people of color. So he did become an equal, a civil rights activist. It don't look like it. Okay, Banneker's quest for knowledge was a lifelong, was a lifelong passion as he continually seemed to push himself to explore and learn more about everything he could, regardless of his age, of what other people told he could do or couldn't do. He was a never-ending quest. He was on a never-ending quest for knowledge that would continue throughout his life. Now, Banneker died October 9th a whole month before his next birthday at 74 in his log cabin. Now, during the time that he, um, when he was doing the survey, Banneker got sick and had to go back home and no longer been able to finish up the survey, but he did most of the survey of DC. He also um, stayed in his log cabin. He never got married or anything like that. He stayed in his log cabin and uh, not sure what he died of or died from, but he died in his log cabin. Now on the day, this check this out, on the day of his funeral, they were having his funeral, was the day that his cabin and his laboratory burned down. They suspect it was arson, arsonist, that someone set it afire. 
in, in that cabin, supposedly, and I say supposedly because I also read that somebody stole the clock before they burned down the building, but they, but supposedly the clock and everything in it, all his almanacs and everything was, and all of his notes and things like that was burned to the ground. There was one almanac left that they now have uh, in a museum. Now also Benjamin, there are a lot of other things that, that they have in honor of Benjamin. They have a call of Benjamin Banneker Park in DC. They also have a preparatory school in DC named after Benjamin Banneker. And um, back in 2003, um, there was a gentleman who started making watches like Benjamin Banneker and um, making watches like Benjamin Banneker and um, you can make them out of wood. I ordered a watch and when I get it, I get, get a chance to show you. But each part, one part of the watch or, or several parts of the watch is actually made out of wood. This was the story of Benjamin Banneker. Unfortunately, he, he, uh, he died without money. He ended up selling his property to the Ellicotts so that he could live. And he actually was the, was the first, what did they say? He was the first person to actually do, what did they call it? The mortgage, how you do your mortgage thing? What did they call it? They called- uh, First mortgage? Yes, reverse mortgage. He was the first one to do reverse mortgage back then. He was also, he also studied the locust cycle of bees and published an observation on bees and locusts. He accurately calculated the 17 year locust cycle and helped the economy impact the, of, of the regular infestations that they had. Of course, he did space and time. He was the first astrophysicist to explore the relationship between space and time paving the way for Einstein. He was also, like I told you, abolitionist. He also did crop rotation. He did a lot of things um, Benjamin Banneker did. And there was a lot of, like I said, rabbit holes to go down. So I'm gonna study some more on the uh, Wolof people. They, are, they sound very interesting because I also read that the women, their thing is today, in today's world, is to dress up. They say a lot of them go in debt. Now, I don't know how true that is, dressing up. But what the pictures I saw, man, they can dress. So that concludes my tribute to Benjamin Banneker, who I thought just had a little part, but he has a big part and a lot of things. And he was the first of a lot of stuff. This is brought to you by Sugar D, all natural and no preservatives. Ashe. Plain truth, no preservatives. Ooh, <laughs> Sugar D. Let's give a Sugar D. We thank you so much, Sugar D. We thank you for the information. We thank you for your spin on it. Um, we thank you just for stepping up and being willing to even contribute uh, to our celebration today. You know, when I when I hear things like the, the sable uh, astronomer and this and that, it's like, boy, they'll say anything besides black man. They'll just say anything. Uh, but it also makes me think of how we always like to show up and show out. You know, every time I see some new black swimming champion, some new black gymnast, some new black tennis player that just come on the scene and just dominate, you can't take us nowhere. And, and it helps you to understand uh, why we were kept from being allowed in so many things because that was known. Our greatness was known. Our greatness was felt. Our strength was felt. So thank you so much, Sugar D, for sharing that with us. Yeah, we are a great people. I keep telling y'all that. We are a great people. She said, I keep telling y'all that. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Baba Damu. Please come forward if you are ready. And that's going to be followed by the Litany of Sacrifice with Mama Afua and Baba Katabasi. So next up, we're gonna have Baba Damu. If you are available, please come forward. Good morning, Wose, and good morning, uh, Minister in Training, Rana. Hello, hello. Uh, 
Good to see you. Uh, yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm thankful and uh, grateful to Allah and to Armin Ra for allowing me to be here this morning. It's been kind of a challenge, but I was asked and uh, um, pray with me as I bring this rendition of an old spiritual that you don't hear too often, uh, but is, it is in the Songs of Zion, uh, a book that uh, the Wose uh, Church used uh, when I was the um, uh, pianist uh, when we first started. So uh, this song is called, uh, Give Me a Clean Heart. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. That was just beautiful. I'm so glad that you decided to uh, step in and play that for us and share that with us. That was really, I just, I just found myself kind of drifting, drifting in my thoughts, but with the music, it was, it was really beautiful. Thank you, Baba Damu. Uh, well, thank Mama you. Afua, um... You're welcome. Um, Mama Afua and Baba Katabasi, if you please come forward for the litany of sacrifice. Yes. Yes. Good morning. It's good to be here this morning with uh, my sister Fua. And same with me with my brother Kadabasi. You there. We can't hear you. You're speaking? Um, no. no, I'm not speaking. Um, sister Four is, is taking the lead, so uh, go ahead, my sister. Um, yes, I thought they were going to show the litany on the screen. Yeah, Thanks. right. Yeah, they've got the, um, the mailing addresses for... Um, uh, Oakland and for Sacramento up there. there That's where is. you can send your contributions. Yes, yes, yes. Save us, O Holy One, by your name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to our creator in the presence of all our people. Gladly, we bring our sacrifices to you. We praise your name, O Amun-Ra, for it is good. And so is everybody's sacrifice. Umoja. Unity, we will strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Kuja Chagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together, our brothers and sisters' problems, shall be ours to solve together. Ujima, cooperative economics. Together, we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kaumba, creativity. We shall do as much as we can and any way we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. Imani, faith. We will believe with all our hearts that our God, our people, and the righteousness and and victory victory of of our struggle. struggle. Ashe. Ashe. And um, MIT Bill have put the um, mailing addresses and the uh, website link up again as to receive your contributions. And I'll take a few moments for a closing prayer. O Holy One, divine creator, giver of all things, Honorable ancestor spirits, forces seen and unseen, known and unknown, that sustain this creation, I give thanks. Thank you, O Holy One, for life. 
Thank you for the seeing of the eyes, the smelling of the nose, the hearing of the ears. We thank you for all of these things. We thank you for the Wose community and the like-minded people that have hungered for the Wose community and the message that it brings. We ask, O oh Holy One, that you be with us, that you continue to give us strength and encouragement. We thank you for all of the contributions that have been given. We thank you for those that gave and those that wanted to, but could not give. We ask blessings upon each and every one and their families. We ask that you be with us at the start of this week and be with us throughout the days of the week, giving us strength, giving us courage, renewing our faith and dedication. We ask that you bless the one that will bring the message today and that you open your hearts and minds to receive that message. Oh, hold on one, there's so much that we ought to be thankful for, but we thank you on this day for our health, for the life of the community, for the contributions that are given, and for those things that are yet to come. We offer these prayers up to be received, and we have the faith and the confidence that our prayers will be answered. This is my prayer. Ashe, Amen Ra. Ashe, Amen Ra. Ashe, Amen Ra. And the prayer is for all of us and your appreciation for Wose and Wose's appreciation for your contribution. Asante San. Thank you so much, Auntie Afua. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much, Balokata Basi. It's good to see you. I love seeing our, our members, seeing their faces, hearing their voices, just here, especially you, Auntie Afua. Just hearing your voice is so familiar and it's so nice to just to just hear you and, and hear that voice. Mm. Um, coming up next which is why the screen hasn't changed, <laughs> is going to be uh, MIT, who we call endearingly the professor, uh, who we call endearingly the one who speaks in English, code, engineering lingo, and I'm sure a few others that just haven't been exposed to me yet. Uh, he is the one who can take it all and make sense when it doesn't make sense. And that's something we very much appreciate. Um, this is my brother in my MIT training. And in case you all don't know, um, Bala Bill's all the way out in Florida. I'm not sure what part, so I'm not gonna make a mistake and say what part, but he is in Florida and that that is just a representation of Wose in that when people leave the Bay Area, when people leave Sacramento, it doesn't mean they leave Wose. Wose goes with you. And one day we may be looking at a Wose in Florida and Wose's in Virginia and Wose's in DC. But yeah, I just dig the fact that, that he's out there in Florida, but he's with us right here and now. So please come forward, MIT. Professor Bill. Thank you, my dear sister, Rana. It is great to be back again with family, with Wose and among my illustrious peers. There are so many gifts, in, so many gifts in our midst. I'm really blessed to be among this team, among this family. In fact, I'm going to 
bring back to you one of my favorite gifts from Minister Makalisi. Nobody can do it like Minister Makalisi, but I'll at least try to break down the meaning a little bit. When we say kujichagalia, self-determination, we mean to define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. We need to make that really, really plain. And to make it fully plain, we need to do what we normally do, go back into our history and understand. We need to understand that our ancestors in Kemet, before anybody else understood that they needed to pass down the details of the wisdom that they were gathering to subsequent generations so we could proceed from where they had left off, from where they brought us. Our ancestors famously moved beyond just coal and chalk and blood on cave walls. They went beyond just little cuneiform in clay, they created papyrus. And I did some calculations and I realized, you know what, a papyrus offers a hundred times the information per weight of a clay tablet. If you count up how much a clay tablet weighs, a piece of paper or paper-sized clay tablet, it's roughly a hundred times what a really thick sheet of paper might be. And for 2,000 years, that was the state of the art in writing. For the first time in history, humanity had thin, light sheets to carry the wisdom of generations. We call them books. Papyrus wasn't perfectly smooth like the industrial products we have now. But again, that was the world standard for written communications for 2,000 years. It was 2,000 years before folks in other places figured out how to make pulp paper, pulp paper like we have now. If you look in the Husea at the Book of Kedi, you will see, follow in the footsteps of your ancestors for the mind is trained through knowledge. Behold, their words endure in books. And a little farther on, it says, better is a book than a well-built house, better than a tomb in the West. Indeed, a book is better than a great house with a solid foundation or a stella in the temple. Even today, our dear Professor Menu Ampim has told us repeatedly, documentation beats conversation every time. When we say define ourselves, name ourselves, Exactly what does that mean? Exactly how do we define ourselves? Do we define ourselves by our homes, by our cars, our clothes, our hair, our food? Of course not. We define ourselves by what we hold sacred. Those other things are just expressions of our culture, adaptations in the moment. They don't actually define us. Again, we define ourselves by what we hold sacred. Do we have sacred parties, sacred phone calls, sacred cars or food? No, we hold our ancestors sacred. We hold our families sacred. We hold ourselves and our roles in our family, our roles in our communities sacred. We know human history is something we create. We know our people continue only when we make a way for our children as our parents made a way for us. Beyond bloodlines, we also have our cultural community. And our culture, like our children, only thrives through our diligence. And as we said, documentation is critical. Never more critical than the culture embodied in our sacred text. 
We have the wisdom of our ancestors repeatedly reviewed and refined by our scholars to yield the best of human insight. And that's our inheritance from all the generations before. These are the defining things. Out of all the millions of books that have been written, we share a very small set which illuminate our sacred principles and priorities. That written foundation lets us start on the same page as we rise to our role in defining history, in defining our traditions, our ways for ourselves and our children. For example, our libation. It's spelled out right there in the Husea, our historical tributes, our Kwanzaa. These are things studied researched and prepared by our scholars. As highlighted by Professor Arma, it's the destroyers who seek to separate everything from every other thing, not us. As we grow our culture, our processes are deeply and richly mixed. By design, this is our culture. Our tributes are reverences and their education and their reminiscences and their shared bonding experiences. All those things together. Our celebrations combine history and politics and entertainment and exercise and engagement and intergenerational learning. These are the traditions we are growing. We have faith in the ability of our scholars to teach the truth, in our ability to assimilate the truth, and faith in our ability to wield the truth. We define ourselves by gathering around our shared truths, affirming and refining them together. Now, when we call each other to Kujitagulio, we also know that means naming for ourselves. And we know that words, the words we use are important as they have always been. Others like to hide their evil in the way they name other people they abuse but our people have always been African and we are steadily regaining our pride in that. No matter how brutally others have assaulted our freedom and our very humanity, how deeply they have tried to drown us in lies, our African spirits still rise. We know their words are often mental subjugation, but we, shine like Rod Daly. We establish truth and expel falsehood. I'll give you another little quote. Hang on. An Italian leaves Italy to come to my country. He's an Italian over there in Italy. He stays Italian when he get here. The Irishman left Ireland to come to an America. He was an Irishman over there. He stayed an Irishman when he got here. We notice you ain't played no games with yourself. Don't play them with us. We left Africa, Africa. And we continue to be Africans wherever we are. We do understand the power of words. Thus said Ra, many were the forms which issued forth from the commands of my mouth. We understand that our people have been brutally scattered by others. We understand they like to refer to our people escaping Jim Crow as some kind of great migration as if we were some great flock of geese migrating. No, we know what happened. We know it was a huge terrorist purge with the US federal government offering nothing like equal protection under the law as our people face wave after wave of inhumane terrorism. So our proximity has greatly been distorted by others' predations. Instead, we name ourselves African as we assert and affirm our solidarity with the Africans who share our histories, share our cultures, wherever we are. And we reject others labeling us by their place names. Similarly, we don't call ourselves by Arabic names like the Arabic name Luxor. Instead, we choose the comedic name Wose as relayed by our scholar, Professor Chancellor Williams. Again, we know these things are important. We must communicate. Our communications carry many, many layered messages, not just one precise meaning. So we use our words to convey our truth, not our oppressor's distortions. 
Listen closely again to Minister Makalisi. Things aren't quite the same. So when Minister Makhalisi sings, a new world we must build, that means our communications too. We're compelled to make sense of many, many new forms of communications. It's a big world. We're to be part of history. We need to keep up like everyone else. We've been using email for decades now, so that's pretty straightforward. It's much like the office mail that preceded it. The office mail our parents use, only it's on a screen instead, and it comes instantly. But we could use some clarity on some of those newer forms. Those things they call social media, those are a little bit more puzzling. Now that's a huge field, kind of complicated, and we're not gonna do more than touch on it, but we can touch on the basics. YouTube, surely you guys have seen lots of that already and you understand some of it's really great information, great instruction. Some of it's just plain clickbait, out to waste your time and grab your attention and sell you stuff. Okay, this is what requires our judgment these days. Surely you've seen Instagram and Snapchat or heard them talked about. Frankly, I don't see much value there for mature people. They exist primarily for entertainment and emotional engagement. They're the modern equivalent of cartoons, mainly for kids. But there's one really, really important thing, Wikipedia. Wikipedia has done a great job in terms of erecting a system that lets millions of people edit together. So instead of being dependent on Encyclopedia Britannica to charge us fees and ship us paper that's obsolete after a while and updates after updates after updates that cost more money. Wikipedia spread that encyclopedia job out to millions and millions of people and it's updated daily. I'm sure there's someone editing it right now. And that's something within our culture, this idea that we take something high and controlled from above and spread it out, make it all our work, make our brothers and sisters problems ours to solve together. This is something Wikipedia does very well and we need to understand it and use it. Now, having praised them, I have to mention something else. You understand just like I do that, well, when you have the majority deciding things, things tend to lean toward the character of the majority. And you probably already heard the majority on Wikipedia is white and male. And I don't have to belabor what that means in terms of the character of Wikipedia. Many women scholars have already complained that in spite of their erudition, in spite of their credentials, they get no respect in that space. And you can just guess what Africans get. That doesn't matter. It's really very, very good software and it is free. It costs only our investment in time to understand it. LinkedIn. LinkedIn's great too, but what do they do? They, they ask people to put in their own information and then they sell it to people and charge for the benefit of selling the information you gave them. Okay, fine. It's okay, but again, it won't get any better until we step in and make it better. So we take control of it. Twitter, on the other hand, that's another kind of a beast. It gets a pretty bad rap, but its basic benefit is really easy to understand. They have a very short 256 character limit. Why? Because people blow V8 and filibuster all the time. And you really need to shut that down to make any progress. 
They set up a mechanism with a tight character limit so people can carry on a discussion and not be bogged down like our Congress often is in filibuster. It's a good thing. The other really nice thing is that business of a hashtag. So you and I and anyone can make up a string of letters and it becomes a new word which can be keyword searched by all those computers tied to the net. That's actually a pretty powerful thing. It can go and find that keyword that you just invented and told a couple friends and they told two friends and they told two more friends. And that way you can build a group much faster, much wider than you ever could. So these are good things. We need to learn how to use them. Now, there's also a thing that's called Black Twitter. But for me, that looks like Black folk just sort of clowning each other, making entertainment for not very productive purposes. That's really not what the tool is best for. We need to use it for its value. All told, there's going to be some confusion from the fact that until the 21st century, we didn't have any tools that let us as individuals have a broadcast channel to the entire world. And that's exactly what a Twitter feed is. You can put what you want there and anyone in the world who has internet access, which is a very large part of the world, can go in and read what you have selected. So it's very nice for families to decide, oh, uncle's retired. He's sitting home reading the paper all day. I can get on his feed. He's retired, but he's pretty sharp. He knows exactly what's important to read. So I don't waste my time watching CBS, NBC, PBS, and all their junk. Which is, again, why CBS, NBC, ABC don't really like Twitter so much. They throw shade at it all the time, try to convince you it's irrelevant. They highlight people doing things like sending menus and other trivia. But the point is, it really does open a channel for anyone who uses it to broadcast to the world themselves. We need to know how to use that. In terms of those other things, like Instagram and Snapchat, those are very image heavy and kind of information light. Those are for kids, essentially for people whose priority is picking mates and socializing, building a social network. If you're not in that group, it's probably not the right tool for you. And we really don't want to get into the wasteful pattern of trying to pretend that we're in that group. It just doesn't fit, it's false, it, it's not authentic for us to go and burn time on those tools designed for another group. When we have real value to offer our youth, they can meet us in the spaces where we exchange purposeful communication, not Snapchat, Snapchat and those other image heavy trivia. Remember, all the social media channels lean toward profit over service. In exchange for relieving us of the complexity of setting these things up, those corporations keep our data, use our data, sell our data, and control it. And to a great degree, they control the interaction. You've seen some of the documentaries, and you've seen the congressional hearings. You see that some of these companies, eh, they don't care about stirring up trouble. They don't care that the platform is used really just for flame bait and again, stirring discord. That's how they make a profit. In fact, very famously, the CEO of CBS said, oh, this clown Trump, he's a mess, but we're making a mint off of all the extra chatter. So we and we'll say need to be cautious about how we use our communications channels, how we define our priorities and ourselves for ourselves, how we create structures that serve us so we can speak for ourselves in the language of our culture. Thank you, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe.
Thank you so much. Let's go. Let's yes. go. Let's go. The black hand. Let's yes. give our professor Baba Bill the black hand. You know, I love it when he goes off. Good job, Bill, Baba Bill. Great Good. job. I love it. I love it. I love when he goes all Thurgood Marshall on me, when he goes all Malcolm X on me, when he goes all fight the power on me. I love it. I love it. You know, Bill is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I hope I'm not saying this wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's a he's an engineer uh, by trade. Yes, yeah. And uh, he, can, he can sometimes come off, and he ain't going to be mad at me for saying it, but he can sometimes come off just a little nerdy. But that's a good thing too. Big brains doing big things, you know. Well, when 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 Baba Bill stepped up today and I saw that podium and I saw that dashiki, I said, "Uh oh, we about to get it. We about to get it." And and basically, what he's talking is about is what we need to do. You know, he's talking about where we need to go and uh, what, what we need to be doing in this day and time that we are in now and the things that we need to be aware of, you know, some preachers preach and some preachers teach, and he is definitely a teacher, uh, about the future and the things that we need to put our efforts and energy into. And I'm just, I'm glad to have him on board on the Wose MIT train doing his thing and representing for, uh, that that thing which is important to us in addition to all other things. So I'm just, I'm grateful we have them. Uh, what I want to do now is invite any of you out there who are watching, who are listening, who have been with us today, whether it's been for the entire time, whether it's been uh, to watch and listen to MIT Bill um, and, and, and are thinking, you know, this Wose thing is a good thing. We're different. There's no denying we're different. Uh, but different is beautiful in this day and age because it's a lot of same old, same old. And basically what he's telling us is we got to fight the power, you know, and, and at different times in our life, that's going to be fighting uh, against or fighting different things. And one of the things we need to do is get with some of this computer age more. I'm not necessarily a person that's super strong in that, but I need to do better. You know, and he's someone that's going to help to remind me whether I do that in little bites or big bites. I need to do better. So if there's someone out there who has been with us for this celebration today and is thinking, you know, I would like to be a part of this thing, Rose. I would like to know more about Rose. We do actually have an orientation coming up very soon. So this would be an ideal time for you to jump on board. Um, if there's one out there, or if there's five out there, I'll take all of you. Just raise your hand, uh, put your name in the chat, do whatever you need to do. Uh, reach over to the person in that next Zoom box and knock on the wall and say, hey, I'm there. <laughs> you know, uh, We're talking about fighting the power. We're talking about carry on, carrying on our stories. You know, as Barbara Bill said, we continue to be Africans and we're going to kind of keep on continuing to be Africans, right? So the best we can do is to come together in unity and find those things that we can do and step by step elevate and step by step grow and step by step teach each other, learn from each other, encourage each other. Is there anyone out there who has interest in that? Anyone who's thinking about it, please. Unmute yourself and say, hey, hey, what do I see out there? 44 people. I'd also like to invite any of you 44 who are out there that if you have not yet recommitted to Wose, and what I'm saying in that is maybe you've been with Wose for years and years. Maybe you've been with Wose in the past and recently, maybe due to the pandemic or whatever, you've come back with us through this whole Zoom experience. We are asking you, I'm asking you, recommit yourself to Rosé. Recommit yourself to what we are trying to do here. Recommit yourself to the things that you're hearing and what you think is important to your community, your children, your grandchildren, your families. Recommit yourself. So if that's something you have interest in doing versus an actual new member, raise your hand again. Raise your hand. 
unmute yourself and say, here I am. And I would like to recommit. Because like I said, that train is leaving the station. We got work to do. We need all hands on deck. So if that's something you have interest in, uh, we would love to have you with us for that as well. Because we got things to do, y'all. Okay, now I can't see anything because I am on the phone. So I don't know whether or not anybody is raising a hand or not. I'm going to say if you are, I would hope you would just speak up since I can't hear you. Um, but what we're going to have coming next is going to be Lift Every Voice and Sing by Minister Makalisi. And I'm just going to say you don't have to raise your hand today, although today is just as good a day as any. But we'll be here next Sunday. So you come on back. All right, Minister Makalisi, please come forward with Lift Every Voice and Sing. I see, I see. Give thanks and praises for that message from Minister in Training, Brother Bill. And indeed, we, it's a new world that we must build. I see, I see. And so lift every voice and sing. Lift every lift voice, and voice and sing. sing. Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the misting skies. Let it resound loud as the roaring sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. March on with them in rock. March on in the spirit of Mott. March on with septipi power every day, every hour. Let's do all we can for truth and justice throughout this land. The sacred African way, Akuja Sinib Ashe. March on, march on with Amin Ra. March on, march on. With Amin Ra. Ashe, rise up. March on. Now unto them who is able to lift us up faultlessly before the throne on high, may they empower us to be a people with one aim. One aim. One, aim. one vision. One vision. One faith. One faith. One faith. One destiny. One destiny. One destiny. One love. 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 One, love. one, love. one heart. One, one heart. heart. One God. One, one God. God. Let us call upon the name of that one God as our ancestors and elders have done for countless generations, for time immemorial. Let us all say together. Amen. You are the most beautiful people on the face of this earth. All right, give thanks.